How do you handle a scenario where multiple steps all need to succeed, but if even one of those steps fail, your entire system ends up in a broken state? Let's say you're building a money transfer feature in your application. When someone transfers money, two things need to happen. The amount needs to be deducted from the sender's account and credited to the receiver's account. These are two separate actions, but if the first succeeds and the second fails, maybe due to a network glitch or a request timeout, your system is now in a bad state. The money is gone from one account, but hasn't shown up in the other. That's a serious issue, but scenarios like this are way more common in software development than you think. The solution to making sure the system doesn't end up in a bad state is to think of the actions as atomic operations. Atomic operations ensure that a series of steps is treated as one indivisible unit. Either all of them happen or none of them happen at all. There is no in-between. It's all or nothing. So how do you implement this logic? Well, you start by identifying the critical actions. These are actions that can't be left partially done. In a money transfer scenario, it includes checking the sender's balance, deducting the money, verifying the receiver's account, and then crediting the funds. Next, you group those steps into a transaction. A transaction wraps the steps together and makes sure they all succeed or the entire thing is rolled back. In code, you'd usually wrap this logic in a try-catch block. If any step throws an error or fails a validation check, you trigger a rollback to undo whatever changes were already made. This keeps your system clean and avoids partial updates. In an online shopping flow example, your transaction might contain the steps to check the inventory, deduct the inventory, charge the payment method, and then generate an order record. If charging the card fails, the stock would get returned and no order would be created. To protect shared data, you should also use locks. Locks prevent two processes from accessing or modifying the same data at the same time. This prevents race condition and keeps the data consistent. The final part of handling atomic operations is handling retries with idempotency. Let's say a customer's payment goes through, but the client doesn't receive the confirmation due to a timeout or a network issue. The client then retries the request again. Without idempotency, you might charge the card twice for the same order. But with idempotency, each request includes a unique token. If the system sees that token again, it knows not to repeat the action. It just returns the original result. When you put it all together, transactions, rollbacks, locks, and idempotency, you get true atomic behavior. Every step either completes successfully or nothing is applied at all. There is no in-between. It's either all or nothing. Head over to umacodes.com for more in-depth courses, coaching, and more. And don't forget to follow Umacodes for more programming videos like this.